on this palm we clearly see the quite uh, tall uh, sheathing uh, base of the last living leaf uh, which is uh, totally wrapping all the young bases of the leaves it is a grayish uh, and just on the left we see another grayish structure which is a spata wrapping the young inflorescence we don't see now and finally the third structure on the left is an old leaf a little bit more brown base of the sheath which was before wrapping all the elements so we see three things but the most important is to know that the spata has exactly the same color and shape as the sheath wrapping all the young leaves. In this uh, park de la Rivière Bleue, we are in a forest which is mostly on ultramafic soil, but the forest is well developed and it's a place where the famous Kagu bird is living in a quite a big uh, families. And here, for instance, we see one of the many monocolous species, a trillet species in the forest understory, but also many monocolous are also in open areas in the Makiminier, for instance, but here we see clearly the erect leaves allowing accumulation of leaf litter falling from the canopy and of course this leaf litter is decomposing and creates accumulation and dissolution of minerals which are falling all along and sweeping all along the stem. So in this very poor nutrient soils it's uh, good to have a humus uh, with the leaves so to have a little bit more minerals because the leaves are able to accumulate more interesting minerals other than nickel and chromium and other heavy metals. So maybe it's one of the reasons why the monocolous species are so common. We see around palms also, pandanus, uh, all these uh, either monocot or decot can be monocolous. So here we see uh, almost a monocolous tree, a trillet, another one. I see the compound leaves, uh, pinnate leaves. And uh, when I look at the inflorescence, probably it's a member of the Meliaceae. There are quite many Coliflorus Meliaceae here in New Caledonia. And when I see the shape of the flower, Yes, it can be a Meliaceae, maybe this auxilum or another genus related to this, but actually Coliflory is quite common in New Guinea and very often in connection with monocolous growth habit. Not strictly, but very often, and this is a case of a monocolous small tree, which is Coliflorus. We see clearly the accumulation of litter. It's uh, the, mostly the twigs uh, here in this case of uh, the casuarina, the gymnostoma. But when we look closely, we see that the leaves are opposite. So finally, maybe, probably it is either a member of Rubiaceae or of Myrtaceae. But of course, it's difficult to see if there are stipules or not in this case, but both families can be good candidates. Very surprising this accumulation of the gymnostoma twigs, but I think there are stipules, so 
probably it's a member of Rubiaceae. This was in Asia, which is climbing along the tree with a very wide stem. It's not so usual because the stem is three to four millimeters and we clearly see the two types of roots. The roots fixing horizontally the stem to the trunk and the long nutritious feeding roots reaching the soil, collecting water and minerals. It's two different types of roots, the feeding ones and the fixing roots. And here, just above, we can see roots smaller, growing horizontally and fixing the stem to the tree trunk. So here we see a very beautiful population of this black gnome, this fern, on the vertical slope, vertical banks of this forest stream. Now is a dry season, so there is no water, but it's a clearly a forest stream and it is growing vertically. And we see actually that this black gnome is creating a small trunk, in this case, the trunk is only about 20 centimeters, but it can be a little bit higher. On this one, we see the trunk fixed on the vertical slope. So here we can see the fertile fronds, which have much narrower lobes of the frond. And the sorry, as usual, are just under the surface of this front. They are brown and covering all the surface of the narrow pinules of the front. This black gnome is really maybe what I have seen as the smallest kind of tree ferns are interesting because we see that the trunk is exactly the same as many really arborescent tree ferns and we clearly see that the roots are creating a much bigger trunk. It seems it's secondary growth but no, not at all. It's the roots just covering the stem in the same way as many tree ferns. We clearly see the stem here at the top and all the new roots appearing along and more and more branched and finally creating this trunk which is about 5 centimeters in diameter but this trunk actually is made of roots. The stem itself is only about 2 centimeters thick. So we see a very dense population of the black gnome at all stages. So it means that actually regeneration is perfect because we see very small individuals, medium sized, some with stems like this, some very old ones like this one. Some are just growing with the new leaves now, the new fronts appearing. Some have fertile fronts. So Actually, this population is very well established for a long time. It's a real pleasure to see that uh, so exceptional plants are still here in New Caledonia. This tree is a species of a Dacridium, and the Dacridium is another genus which has endemic species in New Caledonia. But the genus Dacridium, we can find it also in Borneo, in uh, Australia, in New Guinea, but it's uh, mostly a southern hemisphere genus, but it can also be a little bit northward. 
and uh, we see in this case the narrow leaves uh, so it's the uh, same group as the podocarpus and arocaria is a group of southern hemisphere conifers Here is this uh, small uh, shrub, actually it's obviously an Eugenia, it has opposite leaves, or the young leaves are bright red, and there are actually many endemic species of Eugenia. Eugenia are mostly forest understory small trees, while Cisigium species, very closely related, are usually much bigger trees. This one probably remains not at all a big tree. Yeah, here we see the gymnostoma, so casuarinaceae, greyish foliage, and it has much narrower and much longer stems than the one we did see before at uh, Mount Dor. And also we can compare the quite young specimen with the older ones actually have shorter filamentous stems, more pendulous, uh, while the younger one has longer and much more erect stems. In some way, it seems they are not the same species, but they are the same. This is a beautiful clump of a monocot looking like a grass, but it's not a grass. It's another family. Here we don't see the fruit, but in some other places we see the fruit. It is a Joinvillea, and the Joinvillea is a family closely related to another small family, Flagellariaceae, with the genus Flagellaria only. We can see the terminal inflorescence of the Joinvillea and this individual, which is smaller, but uh, flowering and fruiting, and we see the fruits, developing fruits that are spherical, spherical small fruits, so different from, of course, from grasses. When we look at uh, this inflorescence, both uh, the structure and the shape of the flowers, of course, exhibit the fact that it's not at all similar to uh, grass, to poaceae. This uh, monocolous shrub is interesting because we see that the last, the youngest leaves are huge leaves, this size, about uh, 50 centimeters long. But when we look downward, we see that the leaves actually were smaller. And even at the lowest part, we see these leaves which were only about 15 centimeters. And what's interesting is that the trunk became of course, with secondary growth, became much more thick, but the leaves are persisting. So it grows probably very slowly. It means that these first leaves, still living, are very, very old. Maybe, I don't know, but maybe five, ten years old. But it's not usual that the old leaves are retained. Usually, the old, smaller leaves are not retained when the new ones are appearing.
Here we can see uh, a flowering shrub and uh, obviously with the opposite leaves uh, and the texture of the leaves it's uh, rubiaceae and probably a psychotria and the inflorescence is characteristic of this uh, group uh, of rubiaceae but psychotria is a huge genus and especially here in uh, New Caledonia there are about 100 different species so psychotria and philanthus also in the philanthaceae previously euphorbiaceae are the most diversified uh, genera in uh, New Caledonia. Of course, the genera are not endemic to New Caledonia, but secondarily very diversified. This shrub is uh, well branched, but the branches uh, stop their growth at a limited uh, distance from the main trunk, so these uh, big leaves with axillary clusters of flowers here at every leaf there is a cluster of flowers and uh, I know there are so many species of philanthus in New Caledonia maybe this is one of the philanthus species This uh, monocolous shrub, it, uh, it did fall a little bit, probably due to a branch, uh, is uh, flowering, flowering terminally as you can see. One of these uh, with long, long uh, leaves, entire leaves, but uh, I did look, when we look on the riverside, we see the swollen successive parts along the midrib, so it is a merita in the Araliaceae, so it is typically one of these uh, small understory merita and the inflorescence typical of Araliaceae is a much branch, we don't see yet the flowers and we see it is terminally flowering and after it will be only one shoot, relaying shoot to continue the stem and in some other species of course there are two or more species but for the merita usually only one is growing and relaying, it's why they remain monocolous like this. This is a, probably a small rheophytic uh, species of, of pandanus uh, growing on the banks of this small forest stream which is dry now, but actually it's difficult to be sure that it's a small species because around we see the tall one which is very common around here maybe it's so just the juvenile form of the big one but it's not usual in pandanus to see such a difference between the shape and the size of the juvenile and the shape and the size of the adult so impossible to be sure if it's a small species or just a juvenile because there are no inflorescence at all so impossible to be sure of anything. This uh, small uh, low epiphyte because it is on a dead log. Actually, when I look, it's uh, no doubt it's a member of Urticaceae and it's a Procris. There are very, very few Urticaceae here in New Caledonia, also uh, very few Gesneriaceae, uh, very few Melastomataceae, only one, no small Rubiaceae like uh, Ophioriza or Argostema on the Urticaceae nothing about Elatostema and Pilea, but this is obviously a Procris. I recognize a Procris. I did not know it was one Procris in New Caledonia. You have to check uh, which species it is, if it's the same as in Aegean Pacific Island, but it seems different, much narrower leaves, and it's so cute. We see the small, very small opposite leaf 
it's anisophilus and one big leaf and one tiny leaf on the opposite side totally plagiotropic shoot so the leaves catch the low light level in the best way The monocolous plants are not only dicotyledons, of course, are the palms, <laughs> but here also we see a beautiful specimen of a pandanus. Uh, we see clearly the accumulation of leaf litter in the funnel-shaped, uh, global shapes of the leaves, and this funnel allows the accumulation of leaf litter inside the center of the bases of the leaves of the successive leaves and of course minerals are flowing along the trunk and probably also the minerals issued from the decomposition of the leaves are absorbed also at the bases of the leaves. Under surface of the leaves the brownish like this is typical of uh, sapotase and also the leaves clustered at the end of the twigs. This species is common in forest understory as a small shrub. I don't know if it becomes a big tree, but I don't think so. It's a member of Araliaceae. We can see this to the insertion of the leaves. But it's very special with the leaflets. It seems it's a Myodocarpus, but the genera have been transferred. But Myodocarpus fraxinifolius is a good name because the leaves are just the same shape, uh, pinnate leaves, as the uh, many Fraximus species. This tree with a very thick stems uh, and uh, leaves clustered at the top of the stems uh, is uh, probably a member of uh, the Fabaceae and uh, it's, uh, we don't see traces of flowering or fruiting but probably according to the shape of the big compound leaf it could be a Mimosaceae and I know that there are some Albizia for instance here in New Caledonia but what is very strange is the thickness of the stems. It looks like a cluster of tree ferns or some philanthus also, which have exactly the same so dissected foliage. In this case, here it is leaflets, big compound leaf. This uh, almost monocolous uh, Epacridaceae, uh, which was usually the genus Dracophyllum before, and uh, very six times and only two branches, two living branches at the top, and sometimes only one.
this shrub which is quite common with tiny leaves. I did think it was a member of Myrtaceae and now we see the flowers and no doubt at all it is a Myrtaceae. So maybe a Leptospermum or a Bekea, one of these genera. And we see small flowers, so it loves the Macimini. Another member of the Cunoniaceae, so the so well diversified family here in New Caledonia, and we see the characteristic opposite leaves. In this case, it's uh, pinnate leaves and the stipules just between the opposite leaves. Here we see a, a monoculus uh, shrub which has a quite a thick stem but actually it's a monocot uh, and it's a lomandra, it's a particular genus of uh, this uh, area and we see that the shape of the leaves is zigzagging and it's very characteristic of this uh, species. It is very elegant and we see the terminal inflorescence, a huge terminal inflorescence. and also the quite thick trunk. It really looks like an Ophiopogon just at the top of a thick stem because stem is thick due to the bases of the leaves but also due to the initial diameter which is between one and two centimeters. Here, member of the Glycaniaceae, it's a probably a Stichirus. So the rachis is a, with an indeterminate growth growing always from the top and creating new fronts. We can see here clearly the new dichotomous branching of the fronts at the top, and we can see that it climbs up to some meters. 
in height. Also, probably we can see the sorry. Yes, it's uh, very well designed, and the sorry are in the middle of the segmentations of the pinules. Decontomously branching fronts, always in the middle, the next growing apex, uh, which will allow the front to grow longer and longer on all the dichotomous branching, still a younger stage. Here we see an old Agatis Murii, so a Kaori, but there are many species here. They have very narrow leaves, and what is also very uh, particular is the base of the lateral branches with all uh, these successive uh, parts uh, which uh, are uh, kind of riddles. Uh, at the base of the stem because these are very old stems now and we see the bark exfoliating in some uh, quite regular parts. Here we can see a member of the Cyperaceae, which has very long, very dark brown inflorescences. And uh, it is a beautiful uh, large population. The leaves are quite wide and the inflorescence is much brown. This is a quite huge individual of a flagellaria. It's a climbing monocot. And here in New Caledonia, there are, I think, about three species, and one is endemic. And this one is much, much bigger than the usual species we can see all over Asia. And we see clearly the stem with the tendrils and wheels fixing all the elements, even just the sedges like here. And we clearly see that all the extremities of the leaves are ending in the tendrils. And also we see the very beautiful ligular upper part of the sheath really covering the stem and the orange emerging part the ligular part of the sheath and the prunus it is totally grayish it's a very very short hairs and it's uh, totally white and covering the stem especially when the leaf is still young and it is covering the surface of the sheath Another species of Scribola. So this one has a much branched inflorescences. We can see the flowers. A long peduncle has a typical shape of the Scribola.
this Arucaria has a very strange shape of the stems and the twigs. It is Arucaria montana and just as the name can suggest, it is mostly in a medium or quite high altitude. It is all over New Caledonia but uh, it has been much destroyed and disappeared from most of the stations. So now it is mostly frequent in the northern part of the island. But in any way, it's strange that uh, this plant, which is totally special shaped, is not cultivated in climates where maybe it could be okay, like for instance in northern hemisphere around some parts of Taiwan or Hong Kong, for instance, and in southern hemisphere, for instance, in uh, Rio de Janeiro or around. So, Anyway, the, even if it's only here at home, it is a perfect, uh, incredible sight. What do you think about this on the ground? <laughs> this, we don't know. It looks like, uh, of course, like snakes uh, or parts of uh, millipeds or uh, uh, but uh, obviously uh, it looks a little bit like an animal uh, or the tail of a pangolin or something like that In this population of uh, Lomandra, we clearly see the trunk and the branching pattern, which looks like a dichotomous branching due to the terminal inflorescence. And everywhere we see this branching. It's uh, not so common to see this type of ramification in a uh, monocotyledon, but uh, this uh, Lomandra is always branched like this and uh, even when some parts of the stem are dying it can produce lateral shoots and here we see clearly the divided part of the stem at different levels the lower level and then again but it never reaches more than two or three meters exceptionally three meters tall the flower of the Fagrea. Very beautiful yellow color and an interesting bright green stigma in the center. The bifid stigmatic lobes. Ah, ça sent bon. Mm. Oh, absolutely perfect. And now it's late afternoon. And, mm. Perfect.
we know that in a New Caledonia, many species are dioecious. It means that there are separate male and female individuals. And here I am between two individual trees, one male and one female. It's a gymnostoma, as you are in a C. So we clearly see here the male individual with all the catkins. It looks like a strobili, like catkins. Most important, the inflorescence at the end of the stems, the tiny twigs. And these inflorescences are brown, red brown. And here, this female individual, it's a bigger, it's taller, but it's uh, just this individual, which is probably older. And we see the female fruits which are hanging under the foliage. And of course, nothing reddish at the end of the twigs, just only this hanging fruit. So this is an example of the so common dioecious species in New Caledonia. Actually, when we look more closely, we see that the female congested inflorescences are the small globulous structure appearing at the end of the stems. And it is when they become older and when fecundation did occur that they are just under and hanging due to the white and to due to the fact that the other stems are growing upward. So they are reclining downward. So probably these inflorescence is a fruits now are very old, probably many years old. This is the biggest, the tallest species of a Dracophyllum in Epacridaceae, of course. And uh, when we look at the foliage, it's uh, quite reminiscent of the big Richia pandanifolia from Tasmania, which is bigger and more strictly monocolous. This one is a little bit uh, branched, but often monocolous. Inflorescences are different, but we see really that in this southern part of the world, this family has quite similar vegetative habit. But what is interesting to see in this one is that the inflorescence are in full bloom and we see clearly the small white flowers at the end of the reddish bracts because when the inflorescence is young they are reddish bracts and we clearly see the tubular flowers and we see the relationship of course with the ericaceae in the classical sense. This is a small shrub with a Blue foliage is a member of the Myrtaceae, so many Myrtaceae species in New Caledonia. It's a small, so it's a really grayish blue foliage, very, very shiny, beautiful. And we see the old inflorescences with the fruits are not really developed. Yes, we can see small fruits here of uh, this uh, member of uh, Myrtaceae. So it's, uh, it can become bigger, of course, if it's a little bit more forested area. In this uh, season, which is supposed to be the dry season, there are not so many plants uh, with uh, flowers, but uh, this shrub has bright yellow inflorescence. No doubt 
It is a member of the Myrtaceae family. And uh, we see that uh, actually all these stamens emerge from different congested flowers. It is much branched, uh, only about three meters tall. So why this one is flowering now, why all the other ones are not in flower? It's uh, of course a little bit mysterious, maybe due to the position here on an almost vertical area. And uh, we see actually that each inflorescence it has a new shoot which is quite short about 10 centimeters so it means that this shrub is actually very old so we see all the emerging stamens and uh, each uh, each uh, part is a flower and we see in the middle the red base of the stamens and also the pistil which has a style which is red also. The petals are totally reduced in these flowers. We see the terminal bud which is protected by the scales and probably this is the future inflorescence. So it means that some are flowering now and some as a resting bud and also what is interesting, we see the same as in Calistemon or Melaleuca, for instance, closely allied genus, of course. We see dry capsular fruits fixed all along the stems because it means that actually the plant will be still growing from the middle of the inflorescence because now it's a bull shaped inflorescence, but actually we can see that the summit is covered by scales and these scales are protecting the next vegetative part for the next stem so after when growing there is some elongation of the globular inflorescence it's why we can see this uh, each group of fruit is the inflorescence which was growing just in the middle probably these Capsular fruits can open only after a fire. It's the case for most Melaleuca and Calistemon. They need the fire in Australia, for instance. So probably here fires are in some way quite natural. In some way only. We are in the famous area of the Chute de la Madeleine and uh, here in this uh, Marquis Minier we see here a very strange sage so member of Cyperaceae we know that in New Caledonia there are quite few monocotyledons palms of course are well diversified same as Pandanus and Fresinesia but otherwise very few few Poaceae hein, for instance very few grasses some sedges, Cyperaceae, are more largely represented. But there is an important endemic genus of the Cyperaceae, which uh, can be in some cases a little bit trunk like, and this is probably one of these species. The inflorescence is uh, this uh, almost black structure. The leaves are very rigid and it produces a trunk. On this individual, the trunk is quite small, but we see some other individuals with much higher trunks. Strange always to see a monocot, a herbaceous monocot like this. This shrub with very rigid opposite leaves is 
without any doubt another member of the Myrtaceae family with so many endemic species and even endemic genera in New Caledonia. It is very rigid, still more than the Clusia for instance, and we see the branching pattern which is really with opposite branches and we clearly see the opposite branching along the stem. There are no flowers now, but we see some traces of old inflorescence and here even maturing fruit. Maybe it has only small flowers in the axil like this. It's possible that it is actually this, the flower, and it will become never bigger than this. It's totally open at uh, this stage. In fact, I did look more closely and when moving a little bit uh, the apex, uh, it did fall and I see actually there is a white latex, so it's not a myrtace at all. And when I see the tiny flower, it can be a member of uh, Clusiaceae, Hypericaceae, not a Clusia of course. The petals cannot be a Pocinaceae because the shape of the flower, we see clearly the different petals, so matches well with the Clusiaceae. There are some species of course in New Caledonia. Along this uh, small river flowing to the direction of the Chute de la Madeleine, we see a very beautiful population of the famous Bois Bouchon. It's a, a conifer, a podocarpace, and it is Retrophyllum minus, so growing always along the river. They are small, but actually they are very old, and they are growing almost in the same way as, for instance, the bald cypress in the southeastern United States, eh, the, the famous Taxodium. But here we see how old they are when we see these trunks, very old trunks, and growing totally like a bonsai, always growing only just above the river. We can see the small leaves, which are quite uh, typical of a Podocarpus uh, family leaves. Eh, it's, uh, not really needles, it's really like a narrow, narrow leaves and we can see them here so close. The Retrophyllum minus is not alone along the banks of the river. We see another shrub, obviously another species, and here in this case the trunk can be totally submerged in the water, no problem for it. Here we see a retrophyllum, which is very, very old. We can see the base, the black base of the trunk, uh, which has uh, many contortions and uh, really looking uh, like uh, some old uh, bald cypress, but it is so small. So each individual of retrophyllum has a different shape. So it's, uh, each of them is a kind of natural artistic work uh, and it's, uh, of course it has to be preserved, so it's why now it's forbidden to, to swim because before people were swimming and uh, breaking the branches, so it was terrible for that.
the flower is really a totally pure white, uh, shiny pure white. For petals like this, probably it's a member of the Rutaceae. Probably they are born here on some allied genus. When we look at uh, these uh, shrubs uh, totally bending in the direction of the current, we understand really what means rheophyte. Eh? Rheophyte are the plants growing always in very quickly moving water. And of course, every time that there are high floods, the, all the stems are under the strong current. It's why they are growing like this, but it's perfect for them. All the apical parts are perfectly growing. This shrub is uh, quite common here, near the river, and uh, it has uh, pinnate leaves uh, with uh, toothed uh, margins, and when we look at the terminal inflorescence uh, with uh, more or less uh, umbellate uh, remains of the flowers, this really looks uh, like a member of the Araliaceae, because there are so many different Araliaceae everywhere in the forest understory as well as in open areas on Makiminye like here. So it has the terminal inflorescence and already two departing shoots on each side of the terminal inflorescence. It's not much branch, but when flowering it can become branched. In this area, the Lomandra have the, the leaves which are twining, zigzagging leaves. So according to the areas and according also to individuals, some have rigid, straight leaves and some have zigzagging leaves like this. Of course, the zigzagging ones are much more elegant. On this uh, Lomandra individual, we clearly see the disticus uh, leaf arrangement, so the leaves arising in one plane, and later in the young leaves, especially young leaves, they can turn in all directions to catch uh, the light from different directions, but initially they are totally disticus in arrangement. Here is a Schizea species totally different from the one we have seen in the forest understory, which is Schiza dichotoma. This one is another one, totally erect. Of course, it's a good protection against the strong sun to have the erect lobes of the fronds. And we see at the top the sori, which are much branched and very, very big, huge sized sori at the extremity of each lobes of the front. The front is very rigid and vertical, even the same on the young individuals like this. Just under the Chute de la Madeleine, we see the most famous population of Retrophyllum, but just as you can see, unfortunately, many stems have been killed by the people swimming and, and hanging them because the wood is not so hard. But these ones are very old. But actually the base is not wider than the other ones we did see before. But uh, the trunk is much higher than the other ones. In some way, the other ones along the river are more surprising, uh, like a bonsai. These ones are more like trees. Under these lateritic rocks, so rich in heavy metals, we are just above the Chute de la Madeleine, 
I hope to find uh, the famous uh, Black Lamb Francie, which is underwater, supposed to be mostly at the Chute de la Madeleine, but up to now I did not see it. Hopefully, we have seen many beautiful other plants. There are no retrophyllum here, but we have seen the most famous ones just under the waterfall. I did think maybe here we could find the Black Lamb uh, submerged, but no. It is not here, but I'm sure we'll find it later. It's a very strange this plateau. It's really like a table mountain. For instance, when we were in South Africa near Cape Town, it was a little bit like this, a table mountain. But here, it's not a mountain, it's just a tabular plateau. But the plateau is, of course, tabular, just as the name suggests. This small shrub we see everywhere due to the shape of the leaves and the growth habit. I did think it was an epacridaceae, but uh, on some individuals uh, I see the sexuality, the old fruits. And when I look at these old fruits at the extremity of all the stems, it is really looking like a fruit of a myrtaceae. So it is still another type of another species and probably another genus of Myrtaceae, so a rheophytic species covering all the surface. I know, of course, some rheophytic Myrtaceae in Asia, some Eugenia in fast-flowing water, but I did think, due to the shape of the leaves, it was Epacridaceae, but when I look at the stems, more or less white bark, we can see clearly on this individual here, so it's really like a Myrtaceus bark. So, it's interesting to be in a place where we never have been before. Everything is new and we can make many, many mistakes and it's normal because there are some convergences in leaf shapes. Congested, dry, small fruits, but the shape, more or less square shape, is typical of the dry fruited Myrtaceae. This uh, conifer is uh, dominant on this plateau at the Chute de la Madeleine and uh, its, its silhouette looks like uh, an araucaria because some araucaria have plateaus like this but actually it's not at all an araucaria it's a member of the Cupressaceae it's a Neocalithropsis so it's an endemic genus from New Caledonia and it's uh, growing in some areas in big stands like this and we see it becomes very old, it can keep the, the branches like this and when we look at the trunk, the base of the trunk, we see it's very old and it seems that old individuals have been dated back to 12,000 years so it means it can live for a very long time and maybe these individuals are already very old but it's very strange to see the remaining part pointed sharp sharp points, uh, the remaining parts of the old branches. These uh, apical structures maybe look like uh, cones uh, and it's open a little bit like a star at the apex and when we see the dry structure, yes, it can be the sexual part opening like this and releasing the seeds. It's a gymnosperm, so the seeds are naked. So it seems that these small structures, branch structures, we can see at the extremities of the stems are the reproductive part of the plant. This is another conifer with very 
like a podium like stems with crowded upward scale leaves. I don't know if it's an araucaria or something else. It's branching very upward. It's really like a kind of coral or gorgon or lycopodium. It's really like a chandelier. We see all the upward oriented ramifications. So it's not so usual in these conifers. And we see clearly the small oppressed scale leaves. I'm looking for the famous Blechnum Francis, a submerged rheophytic fern. Current is here, but I see absolutely nothing concerning a fern, or nothing along the banks, along the rocky banks, which seem to be a good habitat. <laughs> ah, nothing. Fuck the fern, comme diraient les anglo-saxons. Uh, here I see something which can be one specimen of the Black Lamb Francis, but it's a little bit deep. It's uh, about 50 centimeters, and uh, I should go inside to have a better look. Bon, c'est c'est le Black Lamb, très petit individu. Elle ressemble un peu à une mousse quand on regarde, mais c'est bien c'est bien ça. The fronds are maximum 20 centimeters long. I was thinking they were bigger. They are fixed to the rock. I see sometimes totally hidden areas like this one. This one a little bit more exposed, but they are about 50 centimeters underwater. The fronds are well dissected, typical of black norm. So, maybe there are some places where they are more numerous, but I'm happy to finally see this uh, black gnome. Um, the rhizome is probably fixed firmly by Adventitious roots. This shrub uh, looks like uh, Plumeria from Japan. I see uh, through a broken leaf that uh, latex, white latex is abundant. So no doubt at all is a, is a family Apocinaceae and we see the very beautiful bifurcations due to terminal flowering on each branches. Now we see in a better way this uh, conifer <laughs> looking like a lycopodium and here at the top we see the emergence of the cone at the apex of the stem. Actually it's uh, 
Also, family podocar passé, it's a dacridium, there are many dacridium, most of them have very narrow needle-like leaves, but uh, this one looks more like an arocaria and it is Dacridium arocarioides because it looks like an arocaria, but it's not arocaria, it's podocarpacea, but both families are southern hemisphere families. These uh, tiny red stars are actually rosettes of uh, Drosera. There is only one species of Drosera here in New Caledonia, but it's growing close to waterfall like this on these vertical slopes uh, of earthbound. And yes, actually, it has a stem, so probably they are not so young. And we clearly see the leaves with the glandular hair. So, the small insects are sticked by these hairs at the end of the leaves. So it's a typical of a carnivorous species. It is adult since we see the small flower emerging above the rosette of the leaves, but same purple color. The Drosera is a produces a trunk. It's incredible when we see the tall trunk compared to the size of the plant. And it's a branch at the base. It's incredible. And uh, here we see also the tall, long trunk, very thick, probably very well resistant to fires because there are quite often fires here. Infectescence of the Lomandra, the common Lomandra insularis, and uh, we see it's uh, a little bit like the Dracaena. It's a paniculate, uh, huge inflorescence like uh, Cordyline or Dracaena, but it's uh, another small family Lomandraceae, related also to Liliaceae, of course. This is a small tree, very particular with its uh, bullate leaves, uh, totally bullate leaves, opposite leaves. Uh, the young ones are red, it's uh, typical of uh, many Eugenia species. And when we look along the trunk, we see actually here the fruit, the white, bright white fruit. So it's an Eugenia. It is uh, Eugenia bulata. The name is a good name for this species. It's eaten by many insects, but anyway, it is still well growing and producing flowers. It's another species, Coliflorus, Somni Coliflorus species in New Caledonia. It is endemic, of course, eh? same as many Eugenia and Cisigium, but Myrtace, once again, is one of the richest families in New Caledonia. Actually, what is looking like uh, fruits, white fruits, because the mature fruits are white, actually are flower buds, and we clearly see the stamens emerging now, and uh, the petals, we see all the numerous stamens like this, typical of most of the myrtaceae.
on this pandanus along the seashore, uh, we see the fruit. Actually, of course, it's a compound fruit. Uh, many individual fruits, uh, which are each more or less circular part. Very long Sencarpus fruit, the bracts uh, covering the fruit, dry now. We can see that uh, once the, all the individual fruits have fallen, we see what is remaining is a central axis. It's not so common at all to see this in the pandanus. And we see each scar corresponding to one individual fruit which uh, has fallen. And the bracts now are just filamentous uh, remaining parts of the vines. Première fois que je vois le, le reste d'un fruit pandanus. On this uh, Merita, at the top uh, on the stem, we can see these hanging brown structures, which are actually the old inflorescences of the Merita. We see all the small individual flowers. In the mangrove, uh, here there are actually many species uh, of a uh, paletuvier, many different genera, of course, Bruguera, Rhizophora, Vicenia, so maybe this is a Rhizophora, but it's very rich in uh, the diversity of the mangrove trees, and I've never seen this species before in Asia or even in Pacific Islands like New Guinea because it has very short arcs. Uh, and very, very elegant. Uh -huh, the pandanus actually is different because the stilt roots emerging quite high along the stipe. We see that at the beginning the stem is quite narrow and as soon as new adventitious roots appear, of course the diameter is increasing. And this one has smaller leaves and which are very blue leaves, so it is different. The big one is probably Pandanus balancei, but this one is probably another one. Along this uh, beach shore, we see the roots of uh, two different species of uh, mangrove trees. The long arches are probably a species of uh, Rhizophora, but uh, all the other totally curved roots, uh, which are very special shapes, uh, are some, somebody different, probably this tree. It's uh, maybe, I have to check, but maybe a Bruguera. It's uh, not usual at all to see these totally arcing roots. We can see here, for instance, three successive levels of arcing. It's really like uh, animals. Uh, really, New Caledonia is also very rich in uh, seashore trees. We see actually that this tree is totally different from the other Rhizophora with arc, big arc. We see it has no arcs at all at the base and all these roots emerging, Pneumatophorus roots, allowing 
to collect oxygen, of course, in uh, this very muddy area and salted area, and also in some way to extract the excess of salt, of course. So we see two different species in this area. On this rock, uh, close to the seashore, we see this uh, small herbaceous creature with uh, lozangic leaves and whitish vines. And we see the spike here, which is falling already. It is a peperomia. It's uh, quite outstanding because in New Caledonia, there are very few herbaceous species in forest and dust story. So, Peperomia is one of the genera, few species, I think five or six different species, but one of the very few elements, herbaceous elements, in forest and dust story. It is Saxicolus, so strictly Saxicolus, on the rock, so it will be quite easy to know which species it is. We clearly see the whitish vines, very succulent leaf. Surprising to see a peperomia so close to the sea because usually they are really in forest and dustery far from the sea, but probably it can withstand some amount of salt. We see that the accumulation of dead leaves in the central part of the pandanus with all the leaves accumulated is a chance for squatters because a route from another tree arriving from quite far has been growing all along the pandanus so this is probably very old when the humus we can see here was here and then it was growing in spiral according to a successive accumulation of humus so it's very important in this very poor poor in nutrient soil it's important of course to have this accumulation of humus and water also during the dry season because it's like a sponge so it's useful for the pandanus itself when the mineral salts are falling down along the trunk but also for the squatters coming here it's important so in the forest the monocolous trees actually are really a chance for many other species especially in these very poor soils in nutrients This small, almost monocolous trillet is a member of the Rubiaceae and we can see the long sausage-like hanging fruit which is not so common in Rubiaceae and characteristic of many species of Atractocarpus. We have seen for instance in New Guinea some other species of Atractocarpus but there are many endemic species in New Caledonia and we see the long old hanging fruit and we can see also a younger one with uh, all the remnants of the calyx lobes just at the apex and also the bracts just below the fruit and the leaves are opposite uh, with the stipule so characteristic of Rubiaceae family Here we see another species of uh, peperomia 
which has a much bigger lease and uh, which is epiphytic and uh, not uh, saxicolous, at least for this individual, with uh, hanging stems. So it's uh, one of the few other species of Peperomia. I'm surprised to see in the same area a third species of Peperomia, much erect, with succulent stems and velvety leaves. Uh, strange to see that uh, this genus uh, could have this diversification in New Caledonia. It's uh, strange because there are so few herbaceous plants in forest and dust story, so the genus uh, Peperomia could have a diversification contrary to all the missing groups in Melastomataceae, Gesneriaceae, the small Rubiaceae for instance. So it means that actually in this forest, uh, even on ultramafic soil, it's possible to have herbaceous species in the forest understory, but due to the history of the flora, the other groups, mostly from Asia, did not arrive here because all the other groups of understory plants, dicotyledons and monocots, are mostly from Asian area. In New Guinea we find them, in Solomon Islands also, also in Vanuatu, quite many Melastomataceae, but not in New Caledonia, which is really an austral element, a Gondwanian element. So we did see the old inflorescences just before, but here, hopefully, we see them in full bloom. So I really think it's uh, one of the members of the Cunoniaceae. The leaves are verticillate by four. You see all these inflorescences, each element made of different flowers. This old Arocaria columnaris has uh, the same shape, so we see in the last few meters the conic uh, last element which is made of the first branch is appearing and then just under all the new shoots which can usually be interpreted as reiterative shoots but anyway what's important is that all the trunk is covered by new shoots appearing again and again while the older ones disappear. In this uh, low forest, uh, in the Makiminier, in the Capandua, we see very close to the ground uh, it can be a tree, but here it's a creeping shrub, the famous Deplanchea, member of the Bignoniaceae, so 
we can see the shape, uh, tubular shape of the flowers, typical of Bignoniaceae. And what is also very beautiful is the red calyx embracing the bright yellow corolla. And it's uh, always a good contrast. We did see the same in India, for instance, uh, with uh, Tunbergia mysorensis, where the bracts are dark red and the flowers bright yellow like this. So it's a very good contrast probably for the birds. It's a good appeal to have this contrast between the red and the yellow. And the stamens are totally exerted out of the corolla. It's one of the very beautiful flowers in New Caledonia. Beautiful population of arborescent de planchea. They are not very tall. It is a cap and vegetation because probably very windy, but the flowers are so spectacular and uh, they reach about three meters, something like that. But all the stems have the terminal inflorescence. It's pas mal. This uh, shrub with uh, flattened leaf-like uh, structures. Actually, when we look more closely, we see that it's uh, not at all a leaf. It is a stem. Why? Simply because all the flowers are appearing at the periphery of this flattened structure. So it's a stem, it's a cladod, and it's a cladodic uh, stems are characteristic of some species, for instance uh, in the conifers the Philocladus, we can see in New Zealand, in, a, in a Borneo also, but curiously uh, not in New Caledonia, uh, while uh, there are so many conifers in New Caledonia, but this maybe is a Philanthus, I know many Philanthus with cladods like this, but maybe somebody else, but of course if we were, for instance, in Central America or in Antilles, in the West Indies, I should say, obviously it's a Philanthus, but actually, here in New Caledonia, there are many Philanthus species, more than 100, of course, but maybe some other plants have cladots like this. There are not so many flowers, but hopefully many shrubs have a bright yellow or bright pink or bright red young leaves, like this Stifelia in the Epacridaceae, with all the young shoots totally red, and after turning a little bit brown, then light green, and finally darker green. Là, rien ne bouge, à peine un vent Venu virer depuis la plaine Les terres rouges partout devant Semble rêver de douces peines Semble rêver de douces peines Sur la colline, tout est silence L'azur calcine, le vol du vent Quelle voix câline Là-bas s'élance et prend racine en s'élevant 
et prend racine en s'élevant, c'est le berger ici et là qui redescend du bleu du ciel. Son pas léger donne le la à son plein chant existentiel, à son plein chant existentiel. Du vent a emporté le champ berger vers le vallon et tout devant piano forté le fait rouler comme un ballon le fait rouler comme un ballon L'éternité est en chemin Les terres rouges aux romarins Ont leur berger et leur chagrin Ont leur berger et leur chagrin 